guys. My name is James Herrick. I'm the Implementation Specialist at Sentinel Fertigation. Sentinel Fertigation is a ag tech startup located in Lincoln, Nebraska, and our core product, Endtime FMS, utilizes a combination of high and low nitrogen rate blocks and satellite imagery to provide growers with fertigation timing recommendations. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Endtime platform, what it does, how it works, as well as show you some results and case studies from last growing season in 2022 and some of our results from our three years of on-farm research. So starting out, Sentinel Fertigation is based in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we were founded in September of 2021. So we've been around for about a year and a half now. However, the technology for our platform, Endtime FMS, was developed using three years of on-farm research at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Jackson Stanzel, our CEO and founder, helped develop a lot of that framework during his master's program. We first commercially launched with a paid pilot program in 2022. So how does end time work? Well, first we're getting satellite imagery. We're using that satellite imagery to perform a series of analytics, and then we can push off our recommendations based on those analytics. So going back to imagery, we have two providers that we're using. We're using Planet Labs, and they we're getting their imagery about near daily, and that's moderate resolution imagery, so about three meter per pixel resolution. We're also getting Airbus imagery. That's kind of our high resolution check that's coming in about once per week, and that's about 30 centimeter per, per pixel resolution. So based on that imagery, we can perform a series of analytics. So our platform is looking at those high and low nitrogen rate blocks to try to sense any nitrogen stress. And those high and low nitrogen rate blocks really help us to isolate nitrogen stress from other stress factors like water or other nutrients. We can calculate a nitrogen sufficiency index and then provide the grower with the nitrogen status classification. So are they sufficient, imminently deficient, or deficient with their nitrogen? And using those nitrogen rate blocks, we can give about a seven day warning for, uh, for nitrogen stress. So based on those analytics, we can then push recommendations out to the grower. So our recommendations come in a fairly binary form, apply more nitrogen fertilizer or don't apply more nitrogen fertilizer. Those recommendations come in the form of a text message or a push notification from our mobile app. So to give you some more context about those indicator blocks, this is an example of an indicator block prescription that was generated using, using our end time platform. So this particular prescription only needs to be done once per growing season per field, and it contains these high and low nitrogen rate blocks kind of strategically placed throughout the field. So this tan area contains our bulk rate, which in this case was about 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And then in these blocks, we have one half of the block that contains a high nitrogen rate, so about 60 pounds more than the rest of the field. And then we have one half, the other half of the block contains a low nitrogen rate, so about 30 pounds less than the rest of the field. So our analytics are really looking at these high and low nitrogen rate blocks to see if there's a difference between the two in order to, to uh, sense nitrogen stress. So how does it work? Well, first off, we'll have the certified service provider configure the fields, irrigation and application systems, agronomic information, and insight settings within the end time platform. We'll then have the grower establish that nitrogen rate block or indicator block prescription using the prescription provided by our end time platform. After that prescription has been applied, we typically like to have that prescription applied prior to the V7 growth stage in corn, we then start receiving real-time image-based fertigation scheduling recommendations throughout crop development. After crop development, we then like to have the certified service provider meet up with each of the growers to get a series of uh, performance metrics like yield or nitrogen use efficiency to ensure successful outcomes, as well as to gather some feedback for how the growing season went. So switching gears a little bit, I'd like to show you a little bit about uh, what the platform looks like. So starting out here, we have our status window. Now, every, what we've really tried to do with the platform is make it kind of stoplight simple. So as you can see here, we have green and red next to recommendation and nitrogen status. Green means good, you're sufficient on your nitrogen and you don't need to apply any more at this time. Red, however, means that you're either imminently deficient or deficient with your nitrogen. So it's probably a good idea to, uh, to apply some additional nitrogen. 
Off to the right here on the map, we have an example of what a satellite image from planet looks like. As you can see, it's not very exciting. This particular image was taken towards the middle part of December, so not a whole lot going on out in the field. Getting back to the recommendation and N status, we can see the recommendation here says do not apply N, and the nitrogen status gives our sufficiency, which is about 55% sufficient. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the platform. We have the Insights tab here. So within the Insights tab, we can again get the recommendation and nitrogen status values, but then we can specifically look at the Sufficiency Index, or SI, or the NDRE value. The NDRE value is the vegetative index that we're calculating from the satellite imagery. The Sufficiency Index is what we like to pay especially close attention to over the course of the growing season. So if there's not any nitrogen stress sense between the high and low nitrogen rate blocks, then our mean sufficiency index is probably gonna be closer to one. But as that low nitrogen plot starts to get a little bit lighter in color or be a little bit more different than the high nitrogen block, then the sufficiency index starts tapering off like we see here with it being a 0.92. At some point, we're gonna trigger that that sufficiency index is going to get below our threshold, and then we're going to trigger a fertigation recommendation. We also offer an NDRE trend line so that the end user can see where those NDRE values are kind of trending towards based on multiple dates worth of data. We can do the same for the sufficiency index. So this is where the human insights portion really kind of comes into play here. We can look at these sufficiency indexes and if they're kind of trending downwards, but we haven't recommended additional fertigation yet, then we can look at these sufficiency indexes and say, okay, you know, we're getting close to probably triggering a fertigation recommendation based on these uh, trend lines here. So maybe we can get ahead of uh, nitrogen stress a little bit more and uh, maybe push out a notification for a recommendation. In the prescription tab here, this is where we can come in and create a custom variable rate fertigation prescription. So with this particular field here, they divided it up into three separate sectors. So what we can do with this prescription building tool is we can assign a different target rate to each one of those sectors and then export a custom prescription that the grower can then upload into their irrigation uh, equipment or fertigation equipment. To, uh, to apply this particular um, to apply this particular prescription. Log function is where the grower can come in and log all of their nitrogen applications that they've made over the course of the growing season. Uh, we've talked with the, quite a few growers across Nebraska that used our platform over the over the course of last growing season and they really wanted a way to, a better way to log their nitrogen applications. Uh, I even spoke to a couple farmers where their primary way of logging nitrogen, specifically fertigation applications, was just a scrap piece of uh, notebook paper that they had in their pickup. So we wanted to have an easy way to log all of those, especially fertigation applications, over the course of the growing season. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit and show you some of the research that we saw with our three years of on-farm research. So this map here shows you an idea of where we were uh, located at during those research periods. Uh, and some results here, 100% of farmers that, uh, or 100% of farmers increase their nitrogen use efficiency using end times recommendations. We saw a 25% increase in nitrogen use efficiency based on those recommendations. And growers saw on average about 43 pounds per acre of nitrogen saved using those recommendations. In 2022, we were on about 8,000 acres spread across Nebraska and a little bit into northeastern Kansas, and we worked with about 23 farmers. One thing that we really like to point out is that 100% of growers that worked with us during research decided to pay for our service last year in 2022 because they saw a lot of value in what we were providing. Uh, we actually got a phone call a few weeks ago from one of our growers that worked with us in 2022 and he actually decided to enroll 100% of his irrigated corn acres with us for the 2023 growing season. So in terms of results, I've got some uh, results here from both research and 2022. So in research, we saw about a $22.50 per acre nitrogen savings 
in uh, 2022, we saw about a $40 per acre nitrogen savings. During research, we saw about a 25% increase in yield per pound of applied nitrogen, so a 25% increase in nitrogen use efficiency. And in 2022, we saw about a 23% increase in nitrogen use efficiency. In research, growers saved on average 43 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And in 2022, growers that utilized our platform saved about 42 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And that's based on about 42 sites that have been analyzed. So why are farmers using end time? Well, as you can see, for a variety of reasons. They're using it to optimize their applications. So maybe they have kind of a set schedule for fertigation right now, uh, but they'd like to see if they can maybe change that up to become, uh, become more efficient. We have some growers that uh, are utilizing biological solutions. So they want to use end time to see if those biologicals are really doing uh, what they should be doing. Growers are using it to reduce their risk exposure. So maybe they had some hail, already had the bulk of their nitrogen applied prior to that hail coming through and they had to replant. Does that replanted crop need more uh, additional nitrogen fertilizer? They're also using it to improve their operations. So maybe they have only a couple pumps, but they're trying to fertigate multiple fields. What fields specifically need, that, uh, need fertigation right now? Where do I need to move my equipment to? So in terms of monitoring biological solutions, uh, we've got a case study here that I'd like to show you guys. This particular grower was located in central Nebraska. They had about pivot, eight pivot irrigated fields with us in 2022, and their soil textures range from medium to heavy textured. They utilize pivot bio, and what their uh, nitrogen management plan looks like is they'll do usually a heavy upfront ap application of nitrogen, and then do some uh, fertigation in season. So we've got a couple of fields I'd like to show you for their case study. Uh, both of these fields were silt loam. You can see in these maps here, uh, the management zones that we generated, as well as where those indicator blocks were located at. Field one has about minimal slope and field two has moderate slopes. Previous crop in field one was corn and the previous crop in field two was soybeans. So what do they usually do? Well, at field one, they'll typically apply about 210 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And then at tassel, they'll come back and apply about 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre using fertigation. So they usually apply about 240 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Using end time, what they did differently was they applied pivot bio at planting. They still applied 210 pounds of nitrogen per acre at V5, and they established their indicator blocks using this, using this application. But our analytics said for the rest of the growing season, you don't need to apply any more nitrogen. So they only applied 210 pounds of nitrogen this year. In terms of yield, they saw about 261 bushel per acre. They saw a 30 pound per acre nitrogen savings in that field. So a 0.8 NUE, 26% change in nitrogen use efficiency, and a nitrogen savings of $18.90 per acre. In field two, what they'll usually do is they'll apply 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre at pre-plant and then come back at V11, tassel, and R2 and do additional fertigation, so about 30 pounds each. That usually sets them at about 210 pounds of nitrogen per acre applied. What they did differently this year was at pre-plant, they still applied 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre. At planting, they applied pivot bio. But our analytics again said that they didn't need to apply any more nitrogen fertilizer for the rest of the season. So with this field, field two, they only ended up applying about 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So they saw a yield there of about 281 bushel per acre, saw nitrogen savings of about 90 pounds, an NUE of 0.43, an NUE change of 51%, and a nitrogen savings of $56.70 per acre. Now, are we out here saying that every grower is gonna save 90 pounds of nitrogen per acre? No, but what end time allowed was the grower to have some additional confidence that they didn't need to apply more nitrogen fertilizer over the course of the growing season. They likely would have applied more if they didn't have any way of monitoring their nitrogen stress. So end time gave them that added confidence. Another grower wanted to use our platform to optimize their applications. This particular grower worked quite a bit with us during those uh, years of on-farm research. Uh, they're located in central Nebraska. 
They had 11 pivot irrigated fields with us in 2022, and they'll typically tissue sample in season and grid sample to kind of guide how they manage their nitrogen. What they usually do in terms of nitrogen management was they'll apply a white base rate and then fertigate most irrigation events V5 through R3. So for these case studies, we have fields one, two, and three. These fields are all located within a mile of each other. Field one has a silt loam soil, field two has a loamy soil, and field three has a mixture of sandy loam and silt loam soils. All three of these fields were strip tilled and the slopes in these were uh, all relatively flat. So you can see our management zones that we have generated for all these fields. And instead of indicator blocks, this particular grower did indicator slices instead. So we generated a custom indicator slice prescription out of end time and the grower uh, uploaded that prescription into his irrigation monitoring device and fertigated and the prescription told the pivot where to speed up to apply a low nitrogen strip and where to slow down to apply a high nitrogen strip. What do they usually do? At pre-plant, they'll apply 11 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Then at planting, they'll apply about 68 pounds of nitrogen. Then they'll fertigate on between 20 and 30 pounds between V5 and R3. So they usually end up applying about 249 pounds of nitrogen. They did differently this year was they, on field one, they only applied 185 pounds of nitrogen and they only did four fertigation passes. Field two, they applied 198 pounds of nitrogen with three fertigation passes. And field three, they applied 167 pounds of nitrogen with only two fertigation passes. So in terms of yield, field one got 266 bushel an acre. Field two was 229, same with field three. They were able to save 65 pounds of nitrogen at field one, 52 pounds of nitrogen at field two, and 82 pounds of nitrogen at field three. That led to an NUE of 0.7 at field one, 0.86 at field two, and 0.73 at field three. They saw an NUE change of 40% at both field one and three, and a 25% change at field two. That led to a nitrogen savings of $40.95 an acre at field one, $32.76 per acre at field two, and $51.66 per acre at field three. So end time gave these growers additional confidence that they could not only cut back the amount of nitrogen that they applied, but they could also cut back on the number of times that they fertigated, saving them some additional labor. So to kind of wrap things up here, what all are you getting with end time? Well, again, you're getting image-based nitrogen application scheduling, recommendations and field trend text messages, nitrogen application logging, fertigation prescription generation, and last but not least, moderate and high resolution satellite imagery. If end time is something that you're interested in, I strongly recommend that you reach out to your agronomist to see if they're also interested in this. Uh, we're looking to build out a network of certified service providers that we call our Century Network, which is a group of agronomists that have been trained on support and service of the end time platform for their grower customers. If you don't have an agronomist, please still reach out to us. We might be able to pair you up with an agronomist in your local area. Here at Sentinel, our motto is Fertigate for the future of today. If you're interested, please feel free to look at our website, sentinelfertigation.com. You can also send us an email at info at sentinelfertigation.com, or you can reach out to this phone number here and get a hold of Shane Forney, our business development manager. I thank you for listening to my presentation today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.